2017 was such a good year for games. So good that I can make a top 10 best. I think I already stated that in my previous video. Coming up next is my top 10 best games of 2017. Yeah, that's right. This year was so good that I actually can make a top 10. Yeah. Anyway, um, <clears throat> with that being said, I wasn't able to play all the good games that came out this year. Mainly because I don't have a Nintendo Switch. So I wasn't able to play The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, which has been widely considered the definitive game of the year by like 95% of all the other media outlets. Um, there was also Super Mario Galaxy that I couldn't play. Um, I also don't have, well, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't play on PC. Uh, I don't play on Windows, which means I also missed out on Divinity Original Sin 2. Um, and I heard that was a really amazing RPG. And I also missed out on a few good PS4 games. Like, uh, I never got to playing Nier Automata. I also never got to play, um, Yakuza 0. Um, so, I guess this is my top 10 games of 2017 based on what I played. Yeah. Well, regardless, here you go. I was surprised at how good Before the Storm was without needing Maxine Caulfield, the main character of the first game. Before the Storm may not have rewind powers, and it may not feel like the replay value we creates to the original, but I really love the skill challenges in this game, where you talk back and try to win arguments against people. That's really cool. I also love the relationship between player character Chloe and Rachel Amber. Maybe even about as great as the friendship that Chloe had with Max. The final episode isn't out yet, but it will be soon, and I can't wait how it wraps things up. This prequel may not be nearly as good as the original, but it's still a damn good game that I can honestly recommend to almost anyone. This is Principal Ray Wells. Let me be emphatic. I have an enormous stick inserted into my butt. Thank you. Also, Chloe, you're poor and in trouble. You never quit, do you? Never. Neither do I. Begin. I was never a big fan of fighting games, and I also suck at them in general. But I'm really digging the path that NetherRealm Studios is going. Between Injustice and the new Mortal Kombat games, I find all of these games to be very accessible and easy to pick up and play, but most notably Injustice 2, which is probably their best fighting game to date, featuring plenty of single player and multiplayer content with a really cool story mode to boot, makes this one a must play for any fighting game enthusiast. Superman wins. Prey was like the FPS fan service game of the year. It felt like a combination of some of the best first person games ever made, like Bioshock combined with Metroid Prime, with a little bit of alien isolation sprinkled in there. I always love open ended exploration Metroidvania type games like these. I loved how you explored everything and how certain blocked off areas required different powers. The combat was okay, not great, and I praised the loot crafting in the game where you turn junk into materials and materials into useful items and ammo. If you like Metroidvania or intense first person games, Prey is most likely your thing. Just 
make sure you back up your saves every once in a while. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. Alex, Simmons, what's going on? We have a problem. What about Morgan? He's alive, sedated. Ma'am, there are signs from the west. Sun King of Odd awaits you at the Temple of the Sun. I've stated a couple of times that the gameplay of Horizon didn't really do anything for me. It just felt like another open world game with collectibles and activities and leveling up. But in the end, it was just the presentation of Horizon that won me over. That includes the writing, voice acting, graphics, sound effects, and the open world was incredibly beautiful. It depicted a new type of post-apocalyptic world. One where civilization has been overgrown by plants and retaken by synthetic life. The best new idea for a game this year may have been Horizon Zero Dawn. Resident Evil 7 divided fans of the series. You either loved it because it brought back creepy atmosphere with dark, eerie hallways, with save rooms and item boxes, or you hated it because of the camera angle change. What the fuck? Yeah, I'm gonna like it because I didn't think action was the appropriate genre that Resident Evil belonged in. And I'm not trying to offend people who loved Resident Evils 5 and 6, if you, and if you enjoyed those, hats off to you, as those were pretty fun co-op games. But to me, that's just not where Resident Evil belongs. I thought RE7 was brilliant in most regards. The atmosphere was amazing, it stirred the suspense from the older games, it brought back all the proper save room features, has plenty of unlockables, gives you the option to play it in VR if that's your thing, and... Wait a minute. Good voice acting? In a Resident Evil game? Holy fuck, guys, I think hell just froze over. I'm not gonna hurt you. Hell, I never would have if I could've helped you. But what do you mean? I'm no killer, son. Neither is Marguerite, nor my boy Lucas. Or even Zoe here. Oh, so much better. So much better. Can't stop playing. Can't stop playing. Got an orgasm, orgasm, orgasm. 16 by 9 aspect ratio, 16 by 9 aspect ratio. <laughs> the Evil Within 2 is the best sequel of the year in terms of improvement over its predecessor. Not that it sounds like that's saying much, I mean, The Evil Within had the most room to make improvements. Tango Gameworks really listened to the community for this one. They fixed the vast majority of problems that plagued the first Evil Within. Gone is the shitty voice acting, blah gameplay, messy story, cheap difficulty, although still pretty challenging, and bullshit letterbox aspect ratio. If you're looking for a great lengthy meaty survival horror experience, the Evil Within 2 is the best that 2017 had to offer. Myra. There's so much I want to say to you. You don't have to say anything. I've been watching you all this time. I know how you've suffered. What they did to you. What... I did to you. You didn't ask for any of this. You've been into hell twice for it. It's time for you to leave now. To live the life that was taken from you. I love you, Myra.
keys. Run. Wolfenstein 2 is the ultimate badass game of the year. It's more badass than sliced bread if sliced bread decided to grow doughy arms and picked up dual machine guns, because that's something William Blaskowitz already does. Shooting the flesh off of Nazi bones and burning them to a crisp has never been any more fun and entertaining, but let's get down to why it's really on this list. The story, and the narrative, and the way the story is told. It's so well focused, well voiced over, and well performed. The cutscenes in the direction are so damn brilliant, it is a cinematic marvel in the medium. Both funny, and oftentimes sad and extremely personal, with childhood flashbacks, and not once does it ever shy away from touchy and sensitive subjects that are unfortunately still present to this day, like racism and homophobia. There are plenty of words to describe Wolfenstein 2. Dark, intense, intelligent, funny, sad, awesome, badass, amazing, crazy, but my favorite, unforgettable. to tell anyone? Yeah, okay. I'll whisper it. I think you're very handsome, and I like you. there somewhere, Billy, inclined to this day to endure amongst the living. Like my phantom thief mask? No? It's a little weird, huh? I couldn't show any gameplay because, one, I bought the PS3 version, the cheaper $50 PS3 version, um, and that doesn't have PlayStation Share. And the reason why I chose to buy the cheaper version is because Atlas didn't allow uh, PlayStation Share for the game. So even if I had the more expensive version, I wouldn't have been able to stream and show gameplay. Which kind of backfired on them because that just made people want to do it even more. So, uh, yeah. Congratulations, idiots. Anyway, uh, Persona 5, this is a really big surprise because I never play Japanese RPGs, really. I never even talked about this game on my channel. Um, I don't play Japanese RPGs, but I heard how amazing this game was, and I decided to give it a shot. Um, I'm just going to go into the basic story of it. Um, you're a teenager who gets accused of attacking someone, even though you were actually defending a teenage girl from getting raped. There's a lot of subjects about rape in the game. Uh, adults being very corrupt people. Um... It's like a coming-of-age game, kind of, only really awesome. After school and on your days off, you can do whatever you want, hang out with friends, play, you know, baseball, um, go see a movie, play a video game. But most of all, 
enter the hearts of corrupt minds or distorted thoughts of people's minds and steal their treasures in order in order to make them better people it, it, it it's weird it's very hard to explain all right all i'm gonna say is it's fucking awesome it's amazing um this is this is coming from someone who doesn't usually like these types of games and that's saying a lot i don't like jrpgs but I loved the combat system in this game. I don't like anime, but I loved the art style of this game. I loved the animations of this game and stuff. I don't like jazz music, fancy jazz music, but I loved the music in this game. It was incredible and I just got into it and I, I, I got completely engrossed and obsessed with it. Um, I highly recommend Persona 5 to any RPG fan. Not in, like, even more than just JRPGs because I don't like JRPGs and I love Persona 5. That's how fucking great it is. You know what? This 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 mass is getting too fucking. Ugh. Fuck. Yeah. Pick up Persona 5. It's one of my favorite games of the year by far. Oh, moving on to something that, that I can actually show. Ah, Jesus Christ, no more masks. I've said it before, and I'll say it again and again until my very last breath. Team Ninja's Neo is better than anything from software ever previously made, Souls or otherwise. It completely raised the bar that from software set, albeit stage-based rather than interconnected. Including New Game Plus, I spent more time on Neo than any other game this year, at over 110 hours, not including the three DLCs that I haven't even bought yet. In my opinion, Neo has the greatest combat system of all time. Need I say more? Actually, yes, I do. It actually told you a story, without needing to shove vague lore down your throat. I don't mean to offend or insult anyone when I say this, but fuck Dark Souls 3, I love Neo. Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice, three-time consecutive award winner at the Game Awards for Best Acting Performance, Best Audio, and Best Games for Impact. Anyone who wonders why have never played Hellblade. This is perhaps the most emotionally powerful and profound game I've ever played. If there were ever a time when I didn't believe that video games and art shouldn't mix, this convinced me otherwise. Made entirely by only approximately 20 people, and written in collaboration with real mental health professors makes this the most accurate depiction of mental illness in a video game. When I reviewed this, I gave it a 9.5 due to a few bugs that were present. It's a 10 now, because I literally have absolutely no complaints about the game. I never have. The only game on this list that I have no personal complaints for, in fact. Every aspect I strongly praised it's the best looking game I've ever seen, and heard. The best acting I've ever seen in a game, by Melina Jurgens. The combat was simple, but responsive and great. It was a triple A quality indie game for only the price of $30. Presentation structure and technical quality oftentimes mean everything to a video game, and this nailed that on every level.
The infamous fake permadeath mechanic was used to immerse the player into its story logic, tricking you into feeling the same sense of dread and anxiety that Senua feels. Hellblade has done and it succeeded at so many things that no game has ever even dared attempt before, and because of that, it earns my game of the year. You can't put it into words. That moment when you look into the eyes of the one who is supposed to reassure you, make you feel safe. It only takes an instant. Fear swallows you before you have a chance to make sense of it. And darkness becomes a part of who you are. You killed him. But her will changed the day the Northmen took him from her. So no one knows that there's no going back to how things were. That there's nothing to go back to at all. Stay still, stay quiet, hide and don't tell around. Their gods can see into your mind. They will use this power to destroy you. They won't stop me. I can still feel him. Whatever's left of him, they will never let him go. I'm not gonna let him rot here! You're the one rotting here. Leave me alone. You will die here. No! And all your suffering will have been for nothing! Shut up! Do you agree with my list? Are there a couple games that were on there that you didn't really think were that great? Uh, and why? Uh, what are your favorite games of 2017? I'd really like to see comments uh, here. Really want to see what people think. Um, like I said, there were tons of games on different platforms that I wasn't able to play. I can't wait to see the comments. Um, this was a great, great year for video games. Um, anyway, guys, um, thank you very much for watching. The Gamer Gods!